Thank you so much. Uh, you know, before we begin, I just have to say, listening to Tarwakal Carmen speak is just so incredibly moving to hear a leader who is so fearless <laughs> and passionate and just an inspiration, not only for women, for Yemenis and global citizens who care about peace. To be here listening to Tarwakal Carmen was just such an honor today. Thank you so much for that. Everybody, please, a, a round of applause for just an incredible woman. Yes. So I'm very happy to be here this morning as moderator. Uh, my name is Lucy Van Olden Barneveld, and I'm a journalist in Ottawa. Uh, this panel has a big job ahead of it over the next 90 minutes or so. We're going to help imagine and map out what an end to the war in Yemen might look like, how it might happen, and how it would be governed. So we're very fortunate to have this very esteemed and wise group of, uh, of, of people here today to, uh, to speak to this. So let me briefly introduce uh, our panel. They will speak for 10 minutes each. Once they're done, we'll discuss their ideas on stage, and then we're gonna open up the floor to you all uh, for questions and comments. So uh, please start thinking about your questions already because we'll be calling on you. We need your input. Alrighty, so we may not know exactly when the war in Yemen will end, but we do know that this community will be ready with a plan for when it does. And just looking around at all the young faces, the youth in this room, that is the embodiment of hope and inspiration. So I think uh, we'll be in very good hands here. So thank you. With that, let me introduce to you our panel. Ahmed Al Said, a diplomat and academic, the former permanent representative of Yemen to UNESCO. Ibrahim Katami, political analyst and activist. John Peterson, historian, political analyst specializing in the Arabian Peninsula and the Gulf. Uh, he's also affiliated with the University of Arizona. And then Marwan al Ghafri, who is a writer, a cardiovascular doctor, a novelist, and a political analyst. Okay, so why don't we get started, if we could. I'll call on you, Mr. Al Sayed, for uh, your 10-minute opening remarks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And there's a clock for you there. Sayyidat uh, Wasada, Asma. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me uh, greet you all. And I would like to thank uh, to our sister Tawakkal Kerman and all the workers, female and males, in this uh, 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 post war uh, Yemen forward looking vision. Uh, I think, brothers and sisters, this destructive war, uh, which uh, destroying the civilization uh, of a great nation, should be stopped. Uh, the uh, conflicting forces should uh, go away and leave the people of those uh, of this nation or Yemeni people to solve their problems and. Uh, draw uh, the uh, right plan, the plan that they think it is right for the uh, future and the present of Yemen. Uh, uh, this uh, war, uh, uh, as we remember all, we can document it, it that it started the 26th of uh, March 2015. Uh, uh, th uh, uh, this date, nobody can doubt about, but uh, as all know, uh, uh, was don't start in days or certain days. Uh, wars are uh, always planned for. Uh, for this reason, if we want, how can uh, this destructive war uh, could stop? We want. Uh, we should know how it is started. Uh, concerning the date of the war, we all know this. When uh, the uh, Saudi aircraft uh, started to uh, strike, not uh, the uh, not only the 
army uh, of Yemen, but also uh, destroying the infrastructure for uh, Yemeni people uh, and their uh, collective memory and the, the heritage of Yemen, uh, the material and the non-material and uh, all the sites uh, that are uh, recorded uh, as important heritage in the uh, world globally known. We know that the third uh, uh, aluminum uh, started with a financial uh, crisis, and there was a question raised, how can we uh, prevent this destruction? How can uh, this uh, military uh, making of uh, uh, weapons? And they were telling that we need to make deals if we want to make more uh, weapons. And we should look for uh, igniting wars here and there. And uh, on the way for planning all this, I'm not talking about conspiracy. This is not, but I will try to uh, put on the front of you certain stages. The, the stages are preparing for this war. All you, you all remember the visit that uh, Amir, uh, Prince Abdullah bin Abdulaziz, when he visited uh, Yemen 2001, then uh, Prince Sultan visited uh, Sana'a 2006. And during this uh, period, uh, with the dictatorship of Saleh and all his power, and I confess in front of you that uh, Ali Abdullah Saleh made the uh, uh, Yemeni people very poor, and he made the security uh, and military institution, but it wasn't for uh, fighting uh, against occupiers and the, the enemies of, Yana, of Yemen. Um, uh, we have uh, an evidence for this, that during 33 years, he didn't shot uh, a bullet against any of northern, uh, our northern border. He didn't think of this. These forces, uh, these forces were there, and the security or intelligence departments explained the, to the Saudis that we cannot destroy uh, the Yemen unless we do what Saddam has done in 1990. And preparation uh, continued, but the decision of war hasn't been made because the Saudi house was about rebuilding the inner house of Saudi. And we uh, know that uh, United Arab Emirates uh, sold an idea to uh, the Saudis. Uh, and they tried to change from uh, the success of power from uh, brother to brother to brother to son. Uh, Abdullah's prince efforts didn't uh, succeed. And his uh, son also uh, didn't have a charisma or personality to achieve uh, the process. And again, power was given to an uh, ignorant person, uh, to the, this lull uh, uh, son of the king. And it's been said to him, if you want to uh, 
go to the throne or take the throne in Saudi, you have to be a very strong person. They told him, you have to take out your sword. But now there are no swords. But he started sending his aircraft to bomb Yemen. At the same time, the uh, Arab Spring Revolution started. Uh, we don't, uh, I am not about to talk about the results of these Arab Spring Revolutions. Of course, from Tunisia to Cairo to Yemen, and you know, the uh, revolution of February in Yemen was distinguished in different issues. For example, not a single uh, dagger was uh, raised, not a single shot was, uh, a bullet was shot, but uh, to the high skies we raised, uh, uh, distinguished, and uh, uh, demands in uh, citizenship, freedom, uh, justice, uh, the uh, fair distribution of power, and uh, uh, ending corruption regardless uh, what institution is involved in corruption. Linking these uh, basic issues is not uh, is not are not limited about toppling Ali Abdullah Saleh, the head of the regime, but the entire regime uh, of Ali Abdullah Saleh or the system that Ali Abdullah Saleh created. Of course, these uh, principles. Uh, scared the neighbors. How can't we expect that the uh, largest neighbor will be scared when they hear these principles and they will remain silent? Of course, it didn't just stop in the 26th of February or the 14th of October or uh, in the unity of uh, Yemen. All of these uh, points in history, they were fought by Saudi Arabia, and it's, this means that they tried to bury uh, the revolution of February since day one, and that's why uh, came the uh, the so-called uh, fair uh, power sharing, and uh, Hadi and his team, and uh, the in, the main system or the main concern for the Gulf system became who comes after Ali Abdullah Saleh and not uh, uh, mending the regime of Ali Abdullah Saleh. So the revolution was buried, and these principles or demands that uh, came as a result of the revolution were buried and we reached uh, where we are today. Of course, we understand that there are negotiations every now and then, but those who made the decision, uh, uh, of course, are uh, when I'm talking about uh, the Yemeni-Saudi relationship, I always remember what uh, a very uh, uh, excellent artist uh, said that we are building the palaces and you are build you are b digging for us the uh, tombs we are approaching you as a friend and you are at attacking us as enemies and between a friendship and enmity there is a huge gap of tears and blood and he, this uh, poet, uh, or Jibran Khalil Jibran, says, damned is an, a nation that has a lot of schools of thought, but uh, has no religion. Thank you. That was a, a great way to start to lay, lay out the groundwork for us to, so we know where we're, uh, where we're heading. So let's turn it over now to uh, Ibrahim Katani. Um. So, assalamu alaikum. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the Tawakul Karman uh, Foundation for the invitation, and I want to thank the organizers. I want to thank Tawakul Karman and Ms. Junaid and all the organizers. And I also, I'm happy to <coughs> be among here, uh, among fellow uh, citizens, uh, Yemeni men and women, and all guests from across the region uh, and internationally speaking. I want to take it from here forward, <clears throat> um, thinking about the future. Um, first of all, you know, when I read the title, post-war, um, many of us were discussing, uh, well, first we need to end the war in order to actually think about the future. But I think what Tawakul also mentioned in her introduction is that we need to come up with a strategy. We need to imagine the future of Yemen. We need to 
look forward. We, we need to stop talking about the past and about the history and to start thinking about creating solutions for what the Yemenis want. And I think that started with the Arab Spring. As you know, the Yemeni people came out in millions during the Arab Spring uh, and, and the, uh, 2011. And the main demand was to establish a democracy. And this is exactly what we want um, going forward, is that the people um, who um, led the revolution peacefully, given that Yemenis have more weapons than its people, were able to come up with the most peaceful revolution during the Arab Spring. And so we need to capitalize on that. I think one of the most interesting things that happened right after um, the revolution is the national dialogue where Yemenis from all walks of life were able to come together and discuss the future of Yemen, including all parties that were part of the world now and also the people that were looking to establish a democracy. And I think that was a really important thing to capitalize on. Uh, the outcome of the national dialogue, that created a roadmap for Yemenis. And it's not perfect that it's some flaws here and there, but I think this is what we need to, um, to come up with in terms of like what kind of system we want going forward. And so the scenarios that we're talking about here today are three. <clears throat> One that would reward the war criminals right now that are fighting in Yemen, some sort of power, and that's I think the vision of the UN and the international community when they're talking about bringing parties together. Basically, they bring in war lords together and able to control uh, the country, but also at the same time that uh, that initiative is supported by whom? By the Saudi um, and UAE-led coalition. Then you have the other vision where we're talking about dividing the country uh, between the southern separators backed by the UAE and Saudis and the Houthi militias uh, backed by uh, Iran. And the third scenario is what the Yemeni people wants. And I think we need to think about the Yemeni people wants because the first scenario will be basically recycling war and violence, and we want to stop that. Yemenis want to put an end to stop, uh, to stop the war and violence. So the, the, the only thing that we can come up with, if the international community is, is serious about helping uh, the Yemeni people, is to establish a representative democracy, a system that is by the Yemenis, for the Yemenis, without any foreign or international interference in the political system in Yemen. And I think the roadmap is clear on the outcome of the national dialogue. And what we need from the past, and the reason why the revolution started, is just because the system in Yemen was completely centralized, with one man, one tribe control everything. And that's what led to the movement in the south, and what led to so many different grievances, even in, in Saada and elsewhere, because Yemeni people didn't have equal access to the system and to justice. And so we need to look forward and how to come up with a system that would actually be decentralized, would allow Yemenis to achieve their goals of you know, freedom of speech, a great constitution for all people, will everyone have an equal access to the system. And the only system that would work going forward to stop war, to stop violence, and to make sure Yemen is put on a, a path toward democracy is the uh, a federal system. And the federal system not based on what the uh, uh, outcome of the national dialogue, remember, and the outcome of the, um, outcome of the national dialogue, they divided the country in, uh, among six regions, right? And those six regions were actually based on identity. Going back, naming the, the regions based on, on former kingdoms that were actually fighting each other. We need to go forward. We need a system. I think the best system for Yemen would be the system like the United States of America system. Would we have a federal government and a local states that control on their own autonomy and have access to uh, exact power and a share of wealth? I think that's the only system that is going to work going forward. But if we keep talking about bringing people together without the dreams and aspirations of the Yemeni people,
we only cycle in wear. We only going back to the same exact thing. So the only system that going forward is a, rep a representative democracy. Yemenis is not going to let any militias or any group or any foreign interference control the country going forward. We might be in a war for a while, but at the end of the day, we know what happened back in the 60s. The Yemenis came together, even though there were some conferences, what they called the Khamer Conference, the Harad Conference, and the Jiddah Conference, between the Imamites and, and, and the Republicans that led the revolution. But we know at the end of the day, the Republicans went back to their people and led the revolution that end once and for all the Imamate system. So now, going forward, is that we need to think about what the Yemenis want, not what the Saudis, the UAE, UAEs, or the international community. It has to be about the Yemenis and for the Yemenis. And the only thing that we need to do is to come up with a federal system that ensures each state has autonomy, has access to their own resources, and make sure that our local governments all across the country, exactly the, like the U.S. system. The U.S. system works so perfectly, and I think it would work for the Yemeni people. Any other systems would only create more wars and more violence. And I'll stop it here, and I'm looking forward to um, a discussion. Okay, thank you very much, you Ibrahim Katabi. Um, the, uh, that, that is a, a great place to start, and we're gonna look for more specifics when we get into the discussion on exactly how you make that happen, right? Because I think that is the challenge. Uh, John Peterson, you also have some thoughts on how Yemen might be governed going forward in a post-war uh, time, so uh, take it away. Thank you. Um, I'm very happy to be here, and thank you for uh, inviting me. And uh, my apologies for speaking in English. I wish I could, my Arabic was better, but here we are. Uh, and I kind of wish I went behind, before Ibrahim because he's said a lot of the things that I would have intended to. Um, I don't know whether this war is about to end or there's going to be significant progress in it. The words that come to mind to me are war weariness. Are the parties concerned, so weary of fighting the same thing over and over that the costs of continuing outweigh any advantages in doing so? I don't think that the war is going to end soon, but I do think there is a glimmer of hope, at least, in something uh, resembling ceasefire, interim ceasefire, in which talks can uh, Take, begin to take place and to take uh, uh, precedence. Does that mean that there will be a united Yemen in the near future? I find that hard to imagine. Um, there are three systems of government uh, that operate in the world today. The first is unitary, in which the central government holds nearly all power. We, we don't have that case in Yemen, we don't have it in, in many states. The second is federal, in which there is uh, power sharing between a central government and the individual states. The third is confederal, in which largely autonomous states or regions hold power with a very weak or restricted central government. Often, confederal arrangements lead to federations, to, to an active federal government. There are uh, numerous examples of this happening. Uh, the Swiss Confederation, even despite the official name of the country, is now a federation, but it took centuries for it to achieve that status. If we look at other examples around the world, there's Malaysia in which a federation of different states in the Malay Peninsula um, organized with uh, Sarawak and Sabah and Singapore for a time to create a country which has not only the state governments that have their own uh, hereditary leaders or governors, but a national government with an elected uh, assembly and a prime minister. Um, closer to home, the United Arab Emirates, which began 
as seven independent, certainly in technical internal terms, independent states that were banded together in a federal union, but retained, uh, jealously retained as much sovereignty as they possibly could for such a long time. It took more than a decade for the armed forces of each of these individual emirates to be merged into a single armed force, for example. Um, and uh, Western, sorry, the European Union is perhaps another example in which individual states have created a federal structure with a central government that, takes that, that carries out many of the functions that are necessary. Um, the problem with applying these kinds of models to Yemen at present is that we do not have states, federal states, many states, whatever you want to call them. There's not, there are no systems of government. The central government is uh, broken. Uh, let me offer a different approach called subsidiarity. Um, Subsidiarity uh, grows out of Western social thought for more than a century. It's been adopted as a principle of the European Union. The Oxford English Dictionary defines subsidiarity as the principle that a central authority should have a subsidiary function performing only those tasks which cannot be performed at a more local level. In other words, in political terms, decentralization. That perhaps there is scope once a ceasefire can be achieved to create perhaps a national conference, somewhat along the lines of the National Dialogue Conference, to have representatives of every party concerned, not just the warlords, not just uh, the southerners of, of, of various groups but of tribes, for example, and particularly the cities, Sana, Hodeida, Taez, of the popular activism that brought down Ali um, Abdullah Saleh, an emphasis on carrying out functions at a local level first, and then consolidating those functions, a role for a central government that is constituted not under the present leadership that the, that the Saudis have a vested interest in protecting, but one that perhaps has at least a titular head of someone who is highly respected and neutral, uh, perhaps a Qadi Abdurrahman al-Iryani for the 21st century, in order to begin by discussing the particular requirements and the functions that could be, need to be carried out at the very beginning, and with the emphasis of doing it on the local level. And I look to the example of the local development associations in the 1970s, in which that kind of initiative was taken by people, individually, uh, individual groups, and carried out. Um, perhaps the best model in this case for Yemen would be Somalia. And right, Somalia has gone through 30 years of strife. It has largely been classified a failed state, but there are indications that it is now approaching perhaps a, a um, fragile state status. An interim constitution was adopted in 2012. A federal government was established in 2013, a federal government that shares functions with a number of constituent states, not all of them. Somaliland and Puntland are not part of this yet. But functions are beginning to be carried out. Um, for so many years, Somalia was in arrears to the International Monetary Fund and could not get outside assistance, and that is changing. Um, Western diplomatic missions have returned to Mogadishu for the first time. These are initial steps that can, in fact, produce results. 
Okay, John, John Peterson, thank you very much for that. Also, um, very thoughtful comments about what happens next. And I think in our discussion, again, we will get to some more of the specifics on how, uh, in fact, to get there. Um, we're going to hear finally now from uh, Marwan Al Ghafri. Thank you very much for coming. And so, whenever you're ready, please. Well, thank uh, you very much. I go caught, ahead. I caught. Uh, come on. Kind of coronavirus order? No, absolutely not. قبل ألفين وخمسمائة سنة قال بودا. Thousand five hundred years. Buddha said the solution for our problems is in better understanding for these problems. We are approaching to a very big crisis. I am. Going to gym to uh, to say some generalizations. They are not facts. For example, the revolution at the end of the day uh, led to destruction of the state. And revolution uh, led to revenge, and then the revenge led to uh, the destruction of republic, and then this also led to the destruction of the nation. And um, and. Uh, this is very important point. Uh, point. Oh, we know that in uh, stable uh, states, uh, then the, uh, the people can come to the street to uh, fall down a uh, government. Uh, uh, this means that the states. Uh, bureaucratic states, if they clash with the uh, people, uh, this will lead to the destruction of the state. The, the, uh, uh, my friend uh, mentioned that the uh, sectarian conflict in our uh, community, we have to confess that, uh, hypo that uh, the hypothesis that uh, uh, the uh, uh, Yemeni uh, country uh, also coming from uh, uh, a conflict, uh, an inside conflict, and uh, and uh, because the Yemen is coming out of from war, we have a, a, an inter or an in conflict. We. Uh, uh, would like to uh, deal with uh, all the scenarios, the possible scenarios, the the, the real problem with our revolution, the uh, centralism of revenge in the uh, individual and the community. In 2008 revolution, it was a, a, a revenge revolution, telling that we are, the fathers were defeated and we are going to take revenge for the uh, uh, defeat of my fathers when the uh, the project of republic was uh, destroyed or in conspiracy with uh, militias uh, sectarian militias and uh, this uh, and, uh, and because of this uh, revenge of this uh, revolution, Houthi, because of this revolution, it is a revenge revolution in the history of Yemen and the life of Yemen as individual, as community. It is very complicated issue. Um, uh, the revolution is not an intellect uh, evident, and this led to uh, a destruction in the uh, country. Uh, and this also led to a space. The Yemen also uh, moved from being a, a state for the sovereignty. Uh, 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 it moved from a truth to an idea. And we were going to uh, imagine uh, what this idea will be uh, after being its a truth. There is an uh, English poet that says uh, the past solution for uh, the uh, human sol uh, problems or that man shouldn't be born, but as if 
he was born, we have to deal with the difficulties of life and uh, uh, regarding post, um, post-war Yemen, there was also in the history of Yemen, there was a war and after war or post-war. Uh, uh, these those periods uh, of 10 years there was always war and uh, post war war and post war uh, 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 and there is a journalist saying every time i uh, visit my grand uh, mother and uh, she always asks me uh, when will the war end when will the war, uh, the war start? These are the questions that keeps asking them. And we have a problem in the national identi- identity. We have now gone into the uh, problem of uh, Arab nationals, but these, uh, the, this nation project has fallen and Thomas Frame uh, Friedman uh, noticed this in uh, as he said in 2013 uh, it is uh, that the uh, only uh, mission of the arab dictator uh, is to destroy any uh, any other uh, opponents to him and this happened also in syria uh, post war yemen is a very important question. What was the uh, shape of, of Yemen before war and how it is going to be uh, post-war? Um, we, uh, we, we think that the uh, Yemen Republic may shrink in the future as it happened before you know, to a smallest the other uh, possibilities that Yemen may go into uh, unfinished series, uh, which that uh, Houthis uh, ha- have control over the whole country and they impose their vision and their view on the whole country. Uh, there are families uh, left uh, Iran in 1979 after the revolution in Iran. And when they w- were on a plane, uh, they were talking that the, this revolution will end in six months. But uh, they are still waiting till now. Uh, the other uh, criteria is Donald Trump criteria, um, whether that after war or post-war, we, what happened uh, according uh, to the Americans and the Afghan people when they have an agreement at the end of the day, we have decided to forget all about the uh, Taliban-USA uh, agreement. Uh, the uh, other pattern is uh, uh, the uh, proceeding frontiers. Uh, that's to push, for example, the borders to uh, other borders and keep pushing these borders for finding better markets uh, 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 and UAE, United Arab Emirates and Saudi also is doing the same by pushing uh, forward their frontiers. And these are uh, the uh, what may be come in Yemen. And also, we may, we may go back to two states of Yemen, the uh, two parts of Yemen that before the unity of Yemen, the southern and the north of Yemen. Um, this is also a possibility. I think we hope we can have the Yemen that Ms. Tawakal Kerman has imagined. 
Matthews. We have now, uh, we have now heard the history. We've defined the problem and we've heard the dreams of what a post-war Yemeni government can look like. So now I'd like to get to some specifics, if we could. So how do we get from where things are now, war, to representative democracy. There seems to be quite a gulf there. So if you can be as specific as possible, giving examples of how you get from here to there, how you get away from Saudi and UAE influence, how do you put power back into the control of Yemeni people themselves? So if you could give us some specifics on how that happens. Ibrahim, I would like to start with you. Well, first of all, um, make no mistake that um that the condition that is being created today is to drive away from peace and achieve an, a, a, a true federal and, and a political system. And I, and I, when I, when I mean, what I mean by that is that the, 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 the condition that the Houthi militias created in the, in the north and the condition that the Saudi UAE led coalition created in the north is driving us away from, from peace. What we need, um, what we need to do um, is to basically the Yemenis have to resist. Uh, we need to resist any foreign intervention. Uh, we need to come up, come up with our, our own system. The Yemeni, the legitimate Yemeni government is either you in or out. You can't just be living abroad for five years and thinking that you have the full control of the people of Yemen. Legitimacy belongs to the people, not to a president or a system that actually exists outside the country. That's one thing. We need to make sure what we're going to do with the legitimate government. The Yemenis are actually still holding on in to the legitimate government because they don't want to give militias the authorities. And that's the reason why we still hold on strongly to the legitimate, uh, Yemeni legitimate government, but it's being used as a puppet to basically um, carry out the plans and the agendas of the Saudis and the UAE. What we need to do is to make sure, we have to have some sort of, to confront the Houthis and, and, and the Southern militias. Um, we cannot have militias and the government. So one thing is to do, we need to fight back. The Yemenis need to come together and create coalitions of people, politicians. No one can stand in, in the way of the people. Um, yeah, it is difficult right now. It's um, hard to basically bring the country together. But once a real movement started like we did in, in 2011, we can achieve those goals. Um, we need some sort of a good movement that resists the status quo, that resists the foreign intervention, that resists the Houthi militias. Now, if you want to think that might be difficult, of course it's difficult. If you want to achieve democracy like Europe, like the United States, there is a price tag to that. So we need to fight going forward. We don't need to listen to what the conditions right now on the ground. The reason why they created in these conditions and, and, and supporting militias is to make the Yemeni people and block and Caden, the country, is to make the Yemeni people accept the status quo and be like, oh, we ba basically need to um, accept whatever the international community imposes on us. And we know what they're looking at at this point. We, they want to bring warlords and militias that serve the agendas of outsiders and not the agendas of the Yemeni people. So we need to rethink and a new strategy and how to achieve the system that the Yemeni people wants, which is a real, true democracy for the people, by the people. And that's creating a constitution that makes sure everyone is treated equally, that is equal access to the system, um, uh, you know, uh, that is uh, the resources to be divided among Yemenis, and a federal system where each state or provinces have their own autonomy under one's uh, federal system. So the, the, what we, the steps that we need to take, resistance is number one. Number two, the international community is either with us, assisting us and facilitating, not imposing their own agendas on us, or letting us leave our own revolution until we bring the country back together. I think that's how Thank we Thank you. Yes, go ahead and applaud. I, I hear an urge to applaud there. Uh, Mr. al Said, you want to jump in? Uh, Thank you very much. Uh, if we're going to uh, bet on Saudi and uh, the uh, Saudi government, we're not going to uh, come to an end because uh, 
this uh, le legitimate uh, government uh, is like a puppet and the legitimacy and the people of law knows uh, uh, the legitimacy government uh, has two uh, uh, points, uh, the popular uh, and the law uh, side. Uh, for example, Hadi doesn't have a popularity uh, or a legitimacy. On, and if we take into consideration the law point of view, we we don't have this also for Hadi government. We should uh, go beyond uh, this, what we have, in order to get to the future. Uh, the Yemeni people, despite all the, their differences concerning their religion and their p p policies, they all agree on main issues that the uh, the dictatorship has ended in Yemen. No go back to dictatorship, dictatorship and uh, and. Uh, Centralism also made the Yemenis very undeveloped people. We need democracy. We need rotation of power, federal government. The federalism people differ about this. Me especially. I prefer two provinces, or at most, or maximally three provinces. Uh, we have heard last that there is a province looking for uh, a seaport. Uh, the uh, other, uh, the other province saying that I am living in a desert. I don't have people, and we have all, uh, the third one, which is doesn't have the uh, components of uh, a province. Question? Um. The problem of this uh, issue, though important, is that it speaks about solutions for the people. And the old definition of the state is a region, uh, state, and sover uh, people and sovereignty. We don't have one identity. We don't have sovereignty. And the uh, borders are dynamic. So we will not have uh, uh, soon a shape of the state. So the best uh, modality for uh, the controlling countries is to have institutions, rights, and uh, uh, peaceful sharing, uh, power sharing. Uh, the problem in Yemen is that it is more complex and uh, those who are imposing the uh, factors is the Houthi group. Uh, this is a strategic exchange in the uh, core uh, aspect of the problem. Uh, in the past 10 years, uh, we used to say every single Houthi is an armed Houthi. Now we have a new reality uh, which says that the Houthis now have people, which means it's not necessary that any Houthi is a fighter. Uh, now we have a new reality which says the Houthis now have uh, uh, their own state with its borders. These borders are changing, but there is a system governing that uh, state, and there is an implied uh, recognition of the international community. Uh, there are uh, defaults in this uh, issue, but it can be solved uh, But uh, uh, later. The in, in the international uh, law, there is no, there, there is no harmon, um, uh, an, an international system that works in harmony that is called the international uh, system or international community, but it can deal with these issues. So there are uh, these Houthis now, they have a number of laws as well issued in their uh, areas. So now, who uh, defines the game in uh, Yemen is the Houthis, which became instead of a group and the, the Houthi state. Now. Uh, on the other uh, hand, there are uh, attempts to uh, 
contain or the, hold the reins of these groups. But this group it doesn't have uh, uh, is not unified. It doesn't have centralized uh, uh, creed. Uh, it doesn't have a leader, and uh, it's the geography that uh, the Houthis are present. They don't have any uh, central uh, leadership, and they are uh, following the Marxist uh, model, which makes it very difficult to deal with. Us. So this will lead to. Un, uh, unending uh, conflicts uh, which will uh, make everybody uh, exhausted usually uh, there is a saying in uh, Yemen says that, uh, for example, if the, I have a corner or an inch in the country, it is good for me, which means they can, people can concede their rights and their freedoms in order to get to that. Uh, Thank you very much. Um, we're going to open it to questions in just a moment. Uh, there, there are so many. Um, I just want to quickly ask John one, one question before we get to the audience. How do you think... Um, how the war ends will determine how the country is governed. Um, you know, whether there is a military resolution, a negotiated settlement, will that have an influence on what the opportunities are to form government post-war? Post yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, can you elaborate? <laughs> um. We don't know how the war will end. And that is the serious problem. Um, you speak about the Houthis, and I have in the back of my mind the question of who are the Houthis? Not where did they originate and, and where is the geographical base originally, but this Houthi semi-state, is it an alliance? Are the Houthis, the, the central Houthis, willing at some point to go back to the north? Or do they see themselves as the heir to a Yemeni government? Um, and until we know the answer to that question, then we cannot say how the war, what is going to happen when the war ends. The same thing for the Saudis. Um, the, the, internationally recognized government as it's termed now is the Saudis fig leaf. They cannot justify any intervention in Yemen without that government. But obviously the leadership is not legitimate and needs to be changed and there needs to be more Saudi uh, adapt, adaptation to allowing a greater independence of that government. I I'm, I'm look at Saudi Arabia has legitimate national or strategic interest in Yemen. And I don't mean, I mean that as every country has to deal with its neighbors, has to be prepared for any contingency with its neighbors. For so many years after the revolution in North Yemen, the Saudis dealt with Yemen uh, as a compromise to keep a stable but weak government and to make sure that it was weak by interfering in uh, supporting people throughout the country in contradistinction to the government. Well, that, that was a relatively stable policy. Was it good for Yemen? No. Was it good for the Saudis? Yeah, more or less. What we've had now in the Mohammed bin Salman years is this foolish attempt to try to use violence and force to create a Yemen that they apparently want. It's not going to work, it hasn't worked, but are the Saudis willing to recognize that? And there are signs in the recent months that maybe they are, that continuing this war 
brings a greater threat from Iran, direct threat. Two, I saw that the OPEC price uh, uh, production deal collapsed, and that's additional pressure on Saudi Arabia financially. The, how many hundreds of millions of dollars do they spend each year in prosecuting this feudal war? Um, Western pressure is growing. It hasn't reached crescendo yet, when one can say that it probably will in the future. Have we reached a point in which Riyadh says enough that we have to find another way out of it? I don't know. Time will tell. Okay. Thank you very much for that. So signs of optimism. Enough there to maybe grow a tree of peace, uh, hopefully, in the not too distant future. So let so so many hands here. Um, we're gonna we're gonna take as many questions as we can. Uh, what I would ask is if you could keep your questions crisp and short and your comments focused. Uh, if we could do that, then we can get a lot of questions in. I saw these hands over here first. Sir, you in the front. Uh, we're gonna start with you. Yeah. Bizi çok yordu. Yüz yüze bakıyoruz. E Almadı, geldi ama. Yes, that. Yeah, it's working. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Evvelen. Uh, uh, first, I would like to thank uh, the Okul Kurman Foundation for uh, this uh, uh, important meeting. And I would like to welcome all the participants. After I listened to the uh, doctor, Mr. Marwan Ghafouri, uh, I had uh, a lot of questions in my mind. Mr. Marwan knows that most of those uh, attending people are uh, the youth uh, of February Revolution, that he um, uh, uh, described it as a uh, revengeful uh, revolution. The Yemenis have 60 million pieces of weapons, which means every single individual, male, female, old or young, that has three pieces of weapons. In 2011, the Yemeni people took to the streets in since some uh, put the numbers to 10 million people in the squares of Yemen. The Yemeni tribes that don't allow uh, any uh, drop of blood to be spilled without taking revenge of it, they were holding their uh, daggers in the squares and the police and anti-riot police would come uh, attack them, they have their weapons with them, nevertheless they were uh, chanting in the streets, peaceful, peaceful. Uh, this revolution that was described by the Mr. Marwan as a uh, revengeful uh, revolution, he has been living outside Yemen for so long. I am a uh, professor, a, pro a former professor in Ebb University, and I, I was living in Yemen. The people is there, the willingness is there, the territory is there. We are in a, in a war or a battle that was imposed upon us forcefully. I agree with Mr. Ahmed that there is uh, intervention to destroy the infrastructure of Yemen and try to make Yemen a fragile state. But it doesn't mean that we uh, should uh, give up uh, or surrender. I would like to say to Mr. Marwan, it seems that you are a representative of the Houthis or the Afashi movement, or and I hope you never uh, speak in this uh, language. Here you have the people of February Revolution, uh, the men and women of the revolution. Okay, if you could just respond. Uh, yeah, in a few seconds. Uh, there is no revolution in the country without the aspect of uh, revenge. Otherwise, it will be like candid camera. 
because we always have, uh, Fanon says those who revolt are those who will never, uh, w w the only thing that they will lose are the uh, constraints. Uh, so the, one of the aspects of the revolution is the revenge. But uh, one of the uh, two things distinguish the Yemeni revolution. The first is that it was impossible to control it. So nobody was uh, responsible for it. The second one is that we, in certain uh, historic uh, context, uh, contexts, the revolution in uh, a sense or another, it wasn't a surprise. If uh, happened that Yemen was open to the world and the uh, researchers, our uh, academics uh, studied outside Yemen or went out, and the workers went to the Gulf state in millions, we need to discuss this issue. Workers in the Gulf would have uh, discovered that the word Yemeni doesn't give them what they uh, deserve of uh, honor, so they go back from diaspora to house, to their house. I would always say that if we had a, a football uh, uh, team, a professional that uh, uh, can win. Uh, any game or any tournament in the world, we would have that kind of honor that we seek for. But for s several record, uh, decades, we have been living under Abdul Ali Abdullah Saleh regime with, with uh, ongoing uh, defeats. So there is no uh, compensation on the moral level or in the ethic level. In 1995, there was, uh, 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 like what happened in the Kuala Lumpur Towers. But, uh, I know, Ibrahim, you wanted to get in on I, this I just point. want to add one thing. I think there is a difference between revolting and revent. When you revolt, you revolt against the injustice for the betterment of the future of your own citizens. And when you revenge, it's actually that's based on hate and, and, and going against the other groups. So there are two different things. What the Yemeni people are doing, are revolting to create a better system against the injustices. They're not revenging. I think what the, the group that are revenging right now are the Houthis, Saleh's groups, <coughs> and, and the separators. They have a different aim. They want to create their own system to serve the elites, not the Yemeni people. So there is a, in Arabic, in the difference between and the and the The Yemeni is from the building of the Yep. Uh, so he's repeating the same in Arabic. Uh, uh, we want a, a, a Yemeni state that doesn't uh, revenge. Uh, the word revolution is coming in from all the Greek revolsio, and it means to turn around, and that's the origin of the word, the etymology of the word. Discussion now. I think this is probably uh, a little bit uh, of a tangent to what we're trying to talk about, um, and we can discuss this off, off the stage. So I'd like to continue on with uh, discussing systems post-war Yemen. Yes, uh, this lady right here in 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 the red and pink. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, my question will. Uh built on uh, the uh, speech of uh, Mr. Wakul Kurman, and I hope the panelists can answer my questions. Uh, Mr. Wakul said that we need to move and find solutions for the future, including having field uh, leaders uh, who feel for the Yemeni people. And this is the most important point that was uh, uh, said today, because the political uh, a group that is working in Riyadh uh, has proven uh, a field uh, work after six years, uh, or, or we are coming into the fifth year of the war. Uh, the uh, as far as the uh, Gulf states are paying money generously to the West, uh, so the uh, Yemen will never come to the agenda of the West. And uh, the uh, industry of weapons in the East and the West are making use or benefiting from the war in Yemen. The Yemenis are not refugees in uh, on uh, European countries, so we don't have a pressure on the European Union. We are uh, low in the list uh, of the priorities of the Western uh, policies. If we uh, 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 propose that there is a charismatic uh, field leader or commander who can bring around him the national forces. Are there any guarantees that the Saudi warplanes will not kill him immediately, at, just as they did with others? 
as long as the Western institutions are not uh, shedding any light on Yemen and nobody is speaking about the crisis there. This is my question for you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comment. I think that was very valuable to the overall conversation. So thank you. We'll keep the comments and the questions coming. Uh, let's go to the, to the middle here. Yes. Yes. Yes, go. Thank you. We need to uh, recognize that in 2011 or in all the Arab Spring uh, revolutions, some people were revol revolutionists and some of them were, uh, they took to the street for revenge. Some people revolted for uh, peace, justice and dignity for all people and some people uh, were took to the street to revenge for their own selves because they didn't find an opportunity with the uh, regime or for their own interests. So those revengeful people, they changed the tracks uh, later when they found their interests with the uh, counter-revolution or they wanted to approach the counter-revolution uh, to benefit from it. The Houthis, for example, were revengeful. Uh, the uh, southern uh, movement uh, were uh, uh, revengeful and uh, they changed the tracks when they found their opportunity with uh, Saudi Arabia or the United Arab Emirates and they became the part of the counter-terrorism against the people. So we need to recognize that there are people who uh, we, uh, used the revolutions for their own agendas and interests, and they changed the tracks later. But we can't label the revolution as an, uh, a, uh, a revenge for personal interest because it is a humanitarian movement uh, or a human movement, not only for the society, uh, local society, but for all people uh, around the world. Thank you. You've explained it just so well. Thank you for. Thank you very much for that. Um, to get us back on track here. Yes, oh, there's a young man in the back there with a with this very enthusiastic hand up in the air. Yeah, right there. Oh. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, first, um, uh, Mr. Marwan, uh, the, the revolution was in the revenge if it were revenge, uh, we would have given this bullet to Mr. Abdullah Saleh. Uh, the second point I want to evoke, the post-war Yemen. But I think that because the problem is very complicated, we have stopped uh, at the war. Uh, my question, what, uh, what we bet on? that the South will go um, as it is now uh, to, the, the, to the detached people, or people who uh, seek uh, detached Southern, and uh, that uh, Ma'arib and Shajwa will fall uh, as Jov. Uh, on what we depend, on what we bet, and how can we uh, take hope from this point. Thank you very much for you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, as you all know, uh, f concerning uh, f February uh, revolution, all uh, revolution, there are peop uh, infiltrators and the people who are looking for their interests. I'm sorry because I have some medic uh, medical issue. But I beg you, don't distort this revolution. This was an outstanding revolution in everything, in all everything, in its targets, in its uh, ways. I beg you not to distort this revolution. I think the problem is that the 10 minutes a problem. We are not talking about revolution. I, I say that many layers in this revolution from people from different parts of the country and some of some of the uh, people try to dismiss others from this revolution 
the first stage of this revolution, uh, as Nadine uh, uh, calls them, uh, the hidden indications uh, about the interests and the violence uh, uh, and these, all these collections of fear uh, and no security and anger, and this will lead to the sparking of revolution. And I'm talking about uh, 2011. Uh, I, I always, I say it again, the revenge uh, element in this uh, uh, revolution was very strong. Uh, and uh, now the revolution is something from the past. Uh, really are getting down into the mud now. And I think, I think that we are looking forward. We want to, we want to, to consider what a post-war Yemen looks like and to have very concrete steps on how to get there. Um, <laughs> yes, so, sir. Right, where, whereabouts? Dr. Muhammad. Uh, there. Yes, Dr. Muhammad. Yes, yes, right here, we'll give. So, shukran jazeel. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Wakul Kerman. Uh, the uh, title of this conference, post-war or uh, before war, and um, we, every subject starts with uh, uh, analyzing and describing the issue, all issues around this. And in this session, I noticed uh, the first uh, for Jefferson that said, I don't know uh, when this war will end. This is an explanation state. It isn't. Um, the problem that we have in Yemen that the foreigners, whether uh, Saudis, Britons, uh, UAE people, if we want to proceed ahead, we need a, a Yemeni will and we need uh, people who work for the uh, interest of Yemen. Because the occupier, of, when he comes into uh, our country as uh, KSA and UAA, or like uh, Iran and, or USA or Western, the uh, will of people will not be destroyed. We are with uh, Yemen to buy uh, not affiliated Yemen. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that. Uh, uh, shukran jazeelan lak. Comments. Uh, um, I think we have time for one more question. Um, there's there's a young man back 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 here. Yes, in the yellow. Yeah, go ahead. We need a female question. We haven't seen that. That's true. <laughs> All appreciation to all the guests. Uh, Dr. Marwan, you only uh, concentrated on Houthis. You didn't talk about Saudi Emirati coalition before days uh, that the Republic is not inevitable. What, what do you think is the suitable uh, system of governing for Yemen? Um, Uh, you uh, uh, so where is there a female who can ask us a question? Who, who, who in <coughs> this is not a woman, though. We're looking for a last question from a, from a woman in the crowd. <laughs> where do we see a right there? Yes. Yes, you. We'd like to hear from you. Thank you. 
Thank you very much uh, uh, for uh, managing this panel. Uh, will we stop uh, at the scenarios only? I wish on this session we uh, talk deeply about Yemen and history uh, and, and imaginary, uh, and we hope to, to come into good recommendation uh, on post-war Yemen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, but thank you very much. Um, okay, which gives us time for one more. He is asking for a long time here. Okay, all right, yes. We'll, we'll, we'll give the final question to you, sir. Uh, so we need a microphone here, if we could. Is there, there's a microphone, here it comes. Here it comes. Yes. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you. I would like to start with a very important thing. I start, I say, uh, regarding I am, we are uh, now in Turkey. We have a man who carries the uh, hopes of uh, all people, all good people. Uh, Rajab Tayyip Erdogan is doing this. Why don't we? Uh, why don't we call? Uh, national Yemeni leaders to come here and to do their job here and we have uh, we have a good chance to uh, activate the uh, interior front uh, so we can manipulate uh, our presence here in Turkey and we have this uh, great man Rajab Tayyip Erdogan which we can uh, uh, activate the leadership in Marib and we connect this leadership to the leadership here in Turkey to activate this in the uh, Yemen Square. Uh, Speaking in Arabic, okay. if I may. Um, I think that the great uh, people of Yemen who have a great people uh, from Europe, uh, East Asia, will not accept custody, will not accept the militias. This is very important, and we know it clearly, and it is very clear. And what's happening in our country is, is creating a new floor to accept the militias and division and division of the country. And uh, this cannot be accepted by any sane Yemeni person. And the only solution for Yemenis is, is to resist, not only to gain the fleeing uh, legitimacy living abroad, we need people who uh, lead a revolution for the people and for the interest of the people. And, uh, I, I know the situation inside the country is very complicated, and, and this happens because of the Saudi Emirati coalition and the people uh, uh, who are backing them, like the uh, USA and Iran and the Western uh, uh, countries. Uh, what we should concentrate on as Yemenis, we should not lose hope. Um, uh, people led uh, revolutions for 10 years. Uh, Imama system finished. We will not accept but federalism uh, that concentrates on local uh, locality uh, back to or going up to centralism. This, uh, we will not accept militias in caves. We will not uh, accept the southern militias. Militias. We are going through a difficult situation. We dismissed the British. Uh, all the occupiers have been dismissed. The imams. We are going to dismiss all the new custody. 
We're not going to accept any uh, foreign will over us. We'll never accept custody. We will stay a strong state, unified state by the effort of its people. Uh, the, uh, those youth or young people of Yemen will not accept but a federal and democratic system that distribute uh, power on all Yemenis and represent all Yemenis and then don't accept we will uh, we will struggle for this and we will not lose hope and we'll t snatch our rights i will not uh, wait for the foreigners and for the outside world to give us legitimacy we should uh, snatch our legitimacy okay thank you very much uh, very passionate and an important message um I think, unfortunately, we were coming to the end of our time, and I wanted each of you to take the last two minutes or so each to just wrap up your thoughts and comments um, going forward, what exactly we should be focusing on. Marwan, I'm going to start with you for well, the final you, two minutes. Once again, we are uh, providing or offering uh, theoretical approaches for uh, a multi-layered, uh, complex uh, issue that in which uh, we lost the uh, the state, the republic, and uh, the people factor as a central unity or unit, and now we have uh, a multi. Um, uh, or a people with, with uh, different uh, identities. Number two, any theoretical approach is uh, remains in theory at the end of the day. We are not providing uh, fact, uh, facts. We are uh, providing thoughts. This is the, the, sec uh, the second point. Uh, the, the revolution is part of the past, so we can uh, uh, look at it uh, in cognitive uh, factors in order to understand uh, how uh, it happened and why. Uh, it is not a holy or sacred thing that we cannot discuss. Uh, anybody can discuss it and see uh, and analyze it uh, in a way or another. Thank you. I think that the emphasis on state building, although extraordinarily important, is something that needs to be done very incrementally. And before state building, there must be institution building or rebuilding, as the case may be. And it will start with trying to create a consensus of opinion within Yemen, amongst all Yemeni people, in order to create first the institutions that will provide benefit for all, not just certain parties, and secondly, to recreate a Yemeni state that is representative. Thank you. Yes, Ibrahim. I think uh, just exactly what I just said, that um, mm -hmm. um, Yemeni people need to come up with a system that serves the people of Yemen. Uh, we, we, we need to remove the current condition that trying to make Yemenis accept any kind of solutions. Um, and the solution at the end of the day is it has to be accepted by the Yemeni people. We need to set up some sort of accountability warlords who committed crimes against Yemeni, the right place for them is to be behind bars, not to be in a driving seat of the country. Um, so once again, is that the uh, federal system is for all Yemenis and we need to work toward that goal. We need to keep the momentum and the revolution going no matter what they put in our way, what, no matter what kind of obstacles they create uh, for us because at the end of the day, it is our country, it is our future, and we need to be an independent democratic state in the region at any cost. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Mr. Al Sayed. Said. Thank you. Uh, and this is, I think this is a very important uh, meeting. And once again, I would like to thank Tawakkul uh, for, the, uh, for holding such a meeting. And I think we really need uh, such meetings in which we may uh, have different opinions. This is a healthy uh, uh, situation. We need to have more meetings. But when the discussions are uh, discussed, uh, the visions are discussed with people of one country, I'm sure that we can reach 
one vision that reflects all the goals of this, uh, the Yemeni people and uh, their different, with all their different political and uh, affili uh, other kind of uh, other affiliations, because. This is our country. We don't have any alternative country. That's why we need to focus our efforts to expel the uh, foreign forces, regardless uh, what uh, foreign forces we're talking about, Iranian or Arabs. And I'm sure that all the Yemenis can uh, agree on the ideas of building a democratic, unified uh, Yemen. I, I want to thank our panelists for such uh, informative, spirited, opinionated, passionate um, views on, on what happens next in Yemen. And to the audience, to these great questions and comments, I want to thank you. Uh, I think we're off to a very interesting start to this conference uh, with this, and I, I have you four to thank. Thank you so much for that. Um, and uh, on to the next one. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.